Hey everyone, welcome to my first video on AB test. Today we're diving into design phase of an experiment, whether you are optimizing your website, testing a new feature, or running a marketing campaign. Well, um, we'll design AB test as a fundamental of reliable results. Let's get it started. A-B test is a method of comparing two versions of th something like a web page, app, or email to determine which performs much better. You split your audience into two groups. Group A sees the control, the original version, and group B sees the variance, the new version. By measuring key metrics, you can decide which ver version is much effective. Before you run an A-B test, you need to design it carefully. Here are the key components to consider. First, you need to decide your sample size and how long to run this experiment. The sample size depends on four items. The first, the effective size you want to detect how big of a difference you're expecting. The statistical power, also known as one minus type two error, it usually go with 80% or higher. Third, the significance level, also known as type 1 error, typically we use 5% for it. Fourth, population mean and variance. Use a sample size calculator to determine how many users or observations you need. Running the test too short can lead to inconclusive results, while running it too long can waste the resources. Once you know the required sample size, divided by your daily traffic to estimate how long the experiment should run. Next, consider the external facts like seasonality or holiday that could skew the results. Running the experiment over a full business cycle to capture natural fluctuation, be mindful of learning effects if a user needs time to adapt to a new feature, extend the duration to capture stable behavior. Avoid statistical peaking. Checking results too early can lead to false positive. Stick to your predetermined duration unless you're using advanced methods like sequential testing. Also, watch your carryover effects if the treatment has lasting impacts and consider techniques like switchback testing to mitigate this. Finally, balance business constraints with statistical rigor if you under tight deadline. Communicate the trade-off clearly by carefully planning the duration. You will ensure reliable, actionable results without wasting time or resources. Next, determine your experiment unit. This is the entity you are randomizing, like a user, session, or device. Randomization ensures that each unit has equal chance of being group A or group B. This is critical to avoid biases, ensure your results are valid. Now let's talk about the unit selection. The choice of experiment unit depends on your scenario. User level randomization is common for features that affect user behavior over time, like a new app layout. Session-level randomization works well for short-term interactions like testing a new checkout flow. Device-level randomization might be used for hardware-related tests like app performance on different devices. But what if the user interact with each other? This is where network effects come into play. Network effects occurs when user influence others' behavior. For example, on a social media platform, if group A sees a new feature and share it with group B, the result of your A-B test can be contaminated. Here is how to handle network effects. One approach is clustering randomization where you can randomize group of users instead of individual users. For example, you could randomize by geographic region, school, or social cycle. This reduces the risk of interference between groups. Another method is switch back testing where you alternate the treatment between groups over time. For example, group A gets a variance in week one and group B gets a variants in week two. This helps isolate the effects of the treatment from network effects. In some cases, you can model network effects directly. For example, you can use statistical techniques to estimate 
how much of the observed effects is due to the treatment versus user interactions. This requires advanced analytics but can provide more accurate results. For example, difference in difference or time series analysis. While the experiment is running, monitoring key metrics to ensure everything is on track. If you notice issue like uneven traffic distribution or technical bugs, you may need to pause and address, but avoid making changes mid-experiment unless absolutely necessary, as this can invalid your result. Here are some common mistakes to avoid. First, underpower attacks not have enough sample to detect a meaningful difference. Two, peeking at the result early. This can lead to false conclusions due to random fluctuations. Three, ignore external factors. Seasonality and external events can skew your results. And that's it for experiment design. By carefully planning your sample size, randomization, and monitoring, you will set yourself up for success. In our next video, we will dive into hypothesis testing, how to analyze your result and make data-driven decision. See you then.